Good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. This is BRNAM for Wednesday, January 24th, 2024. And our top story today, animal shelters are at a point of crisis. And joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Stephanie Filer is an executive director. Joining me now to discuss this and a lot more, Stephanie Filer is the executive director of Animal Shelter Count. Stephanie, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, and I, I love talking about pets and talking about my cats and, and, and you know, I'm passionate about that. Uh, but I want to start off by asking, how are America's shelters doing today? Yeah, unfortunately, um, American shelters are really, really struggling right now with animals, the, the sheer volume of animals coming in, um, the animals that are waiting to be adopted or reunited, um, and really starting to see their populations grow and struggling to find space along the way. Um, it's been a challenging year after a challenging couple years, and, and it seems to just be getting worse, not better. Yeah, and you bring up, uh, there's a recent report, I think, that U.S. animal shelters took in 6% more dogs uh, January to November of 2023 versus the same period. What what has been the impetus? Why, why have people turned, why are there more dogs and cats and animals being turned in to shelters? Yeah, there. I mean, it's really a, a lot of reasons, and, and dogs seem to be in, being impacted worse than cats, um, which is interesting because that's very different than what we saw uh, pre-pandemic. Um, but what we're seeing now is a lot of dogs entering shelters as strays. We're seeing our stray increase go up. Um, although when we dig into it a little bit more, it seems like these are dogs that have owners that um, just are unable to find a shelter that has space. Um, and so they're having to make these tough decisions when they can't keep their pet. And a lot of times what we're seeing for dogs, especially large dogs over um, a, even 30 pounds um, or even certain breeds are being restricted a lot due, due to housing. People are losing their housing. Um, there's there's a whole host of economic based reasons that are really impacting dogs right now. Um, and at the same time, we're seeing our our dog adoption rates just really flatline. And about one out of every two dogs that enters a shelter is adopted. Um, there's some that are reunited with their owners if they're lost. There's some that are transferred to other shelters that have space. Um, and right now, about one out of every 10 dogs are being euthanized in shelters. And we have seen that go up over the past um, three years in particular. And we're hearing from our partners that um, shelters that have had to make excruciating decisions that they haven't had to make in many, many years because of this space crisis. And so it's kind of that perfect storm of shortage of staffing, tough economy, a lot of people struggling, and shelters always reflect what's happening in the community. And, and I feel like a lot of people adopted animals during the pandemic. And, and look, people, as much as we all like to work from home, people going back to work, maybe some of the time, it's that hybrid approach. And also, you mentioned some of the economic factors, the cost of dog and cat food. I, we use prescription food for our two lovely uh, cats. Uh, those costs have gone up as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, we we did expect to see some just natural lifestyle changes impacting pets being surrendered to shelters as people return to work, but not it, it really wasn't supported in the data. You know, it happened, but it wasn't this like trend or this crisis. Really, it seems to be that average person struggling and um, not not getting rid of their pet out of convenience, but really out of after trying everything possible to keep them. And you're right. I mean, the cost of pet food has gone up. Everything um, related to veterinary care has gone up. If you even can access a vet, there's such a vet shortage that Sometimes the wait lists are, are too long. Um, and there's just every everything that's happening to families that impacts pets seems to just becoming more expensive and more prohibitive, whether that's housing restrictions or it is the cost of care, basic care. I mean, um, the, just the cost of living increase alone for what we need to buy for ourselves impacts then what extra money we have for pets and other things like that. And so we, we really are seeing all of that come together um, and result in more pets entering shelters. And then we assume um, could be contributing to why people are being slow to adopt um, dogs in particular. 
Yeah. Uh, well, Stephanie, I need to take a very quick break, and this all makes me, it breaks my heart. But we come back, we're going to talk about potential solutions. What can you do? Well, you're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Welcome back. We're joined this morning by Stephanie Filer of Animal Shelter Counts. Stephanie, thanks so much for staying with us. Really appreciate you hanging around for segment number two this morning. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, then, and as I said, this really, as, a, as an owner of two cats, and I love going to the shelter at the Humane Society here in Charlotte to see the cats and play with them. My favorite are the black cats and, and because we have one. Um, and not to sound like Bob Barker, but one of the things that the, the longtime host of uh, Price is Right, but one of the things that you mentioned is that there has been an increased number of strays. Certainly, if people have their pets spayed or neutered, again, now I'm quoting Bob Barker, that might help alleviate that the volume of, of strays on the, on the street. I was going to say on the market, but on the street. Yeah, I mean, when you look at it as a market thing, it really is. It's that supply demand and you're 100% right when there's an oversupply, which we have right now of pets. Um, that is where we're filling up in shelters. And so the interesting thing is that there is a, a big component of spay neuter that's playing a role in this. We're seeing our partner shelters have way more puppies than they typically have. Um, and we're also seeing them have a lot more purebreds or intentional hybrids like the oodles and poos. Um, that are in shelters too. And so it, it really is, does tend to be this overproduction um, that is also contributing to that. So spay neuter also does play a large role when your pets get lost. Um, you're more likely to have a reunited outcome with them if they're spayed or neutered prior. And of course, microchipped and tags and everything as well. But the spay neuter factor has a huge component in a lot of things, homelessness, being reunited, and even the health of your pet. Yeah. Let's talk about what people can do. So let's talk about the individual. Maybe you're not, maybe you are a pet owner and you probably can't take on more pets. You can't buy another pet. Even though I try to convince my wife, we have two cats. I want two more. She's like, no, not until you get a cleaning person, but that's a whole nother issue. What, in all seriousness, what can we do to help out our, your shelter partners um, and to help alleviate what is obviously a very difficult time? Yeah. For, for those who are not um, on a limit of how many pets they can have right now, they if you're looking to add a pet to the home, absolutely go to your shelter or um, your foster-based rescue and adopt first. That's first and foremost um, how people can help. And then for those who maybe are at their max, like you and I, um, we can do other things like volunteer in the shelter. Um, a lot of times even just taking if dogs are your thing, taking them out of the shelter and getting them exposed to a new audience who um, might be looking to adopt and meet that dog. If cats are your thing, getting in there and socializing them and playing with them as well. And those are all great ways that you can help support the staff and help in, ensure that these pets find great homes. Um, even if you're not able to adopt, sometimes you can have a foster for a few days or a few weeks 
Um, if you have an extra bedroom or an extra bathroom, sometimes that's a, a great option to give a pet a break from the shelter and free up space for new ones coming in. And then of course, uh, financial donations are always um, needed, especially as the cost of goods continues to go up. Um, the cost of food that we have to pay for our pets that have gone up is now multiplied in shelters when you're talking about thousands of animals that they're having to feed. So all four of those things make a huge, huge difference. And, and do shelters accept donations of, uh, say you have a pet that recently passed or you just wanna be a good person, go to a local pet smart or local pet store, uh, litter, uh, bedding, do, do, do shelters in general around the country accept those types of donations or do they just prefer dollars and um, volunteers? Yeah, really both. The dollars can be used to cover veterinary expenses and sometimes can make the dollar go further if they have a discounted food program that they can purchase. Um, but they always mm. are looking for tangible items too. I know I just bought my dogs two new beds and asked the my local shelter if they could use the other beds that are totally fine. Um, and they said, yes, they would gladly use them. And so there's things that you can do as your pets pass or even going out to the store and going on a shopping spree with a pet. Um, they literally can use all the help they can get. And even th simple things too, like um, old towels or sheets and blankets. Those are things that can often be used um, by shelters that you may have just laying around your house already, newspapers. A lot of times, um, if you go to their website, they'll have a list. And if you're unsure, just stop by and see what they're able to take. And, and that's a great solution too. Yeah, last question. You mentioned in the previous segment, there's a shortage of veterinarians. Do you see that? I mean, who wouldn't want to be a veterinarian? First of all, you get to treat something other than a human being. <laughs> so that, that to me would be enjoyable. But also, uh, but, but there are shortages of, of vets. Have, are you seeing that improve uh, over a long period of time? Or do you see that us kind of catching up and, and training those future vets? You know, there's a lot of different solutions being looked at right now to see how we can remedy that because it is projected to be a, sh a shortage for a while. Um, and vet work is very hard, um, but it's also, like you said, so rewarding. And especially our vets that work in shelter medicine and take care of animals um, in a high volume setting, they're literally saving thousands of lives um, a year. And so we're hoping that we can continue to inspire people to go that route in, in their schooling and hopefully join a shelter when they get out of school. And if not, if they would do private practice, there's a lot of shelter partnerships that can help as well. Um, but people who are struggling to find a vet for their own personal pets, or even just struggling to provide food or other um, things for their animal, if they reach out to their shelter, a lot of times they have programs or partnerships that they can help connect them with, um, whether it's a, a cost issue or it's even just a scheduling issue to get your pet in for its vaccines. A lot of shelters are, are helping doing some of that work so we can keep pets with the homes and the people who love them. Yeah. Uh, well, Stephanie, this is uh, it was great to meet you and let's hope we can kind of move the needle. It's January. Great people can donate their time or their money or even fresh food supplies for uh, their loved ones. I mean, their, their pet loved ones or pets out there. Stephanie, great to talk to you. Thanks so much for joining us. And we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Thank you. And that wraps up this episode of BRNAM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to. Drop us a line and don't forget for all the latest curated news and lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more in all in one place, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content, then visit our website. We're back again tomorrow with another great edition of BRN AM. We'll have a very special guest. You're not going to want to miss it. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.